Welcome back everyone to Most Amazing Top 10. My name is Daniel Berg and today we're going to be taking a look at the top 10 birth stories you won't believe. Well, I'll be honest, you will believe them. That's just kind of the title, you know. Sorry to burst your bubble everyone, BuzzFeed lied to us all. Before we get into this, did you guys know we're having a most amazing meetup? It's our first ever one. Ever. It's going to be at Dundas Square in Toronto on May 12th at 2 p.m. sharp. Come out and say hi. Bring your most amazing shirt from mostamazingshop.com and we will sign the first ones that we see. It's going to be a lovely afternoon. Don't worry if you can't make it though. We're going to be announcing more dates in different places throughout the year. Starting off at number 10 now, we have the grandson. In 2011, a woman from Chicago gave birth to her own grandson. Sounds crazy, but it's actually true. Okay, so her daughter is called Connell. Connell and her husband have been struggling to have a baby for years and were looking for a surrogate mother to carry their fertilized embryo. Connell's own mother stepped forward to say that she would carry the child. Of course, postmenopausal birth can come with a lot of risks, but after many tests, the doctors gave her the green light. She ended up giving birth through C-section to Finian, a healthy boy, and her own grandson. Can't quite get my head around that. All right, we're gonna stay with the grandparent theme now. At number nine, we have the youngest grandmother ever. This record is held by Rivka Stanescu of Romania, who became a grandmother at the ripe old age of 23. She eloped at the age of 11 because she was scared of being forced into marriage by her father. She gave birth to her daughter, Maria, at age 12. When Maria was 11, she gave birth to her daughter, Nicolae. Pretty mind-blowing stuff. On a side note, that also made Rivka's mum a great-grandmother at the age of 40. I mean, I'm just gonna leave you guys with those facts and see what you have to say in the comments section. Next up at number eight now, we have the surprise birth. A birth can surprise a lot of people, but have you guys ever heard of it surprising the mother? Jennifer West of Illinois woke up one morning with what felt like the worst period of cramp she had ever experienced. It got so bad that she ended up visiting a hospital where incredibly, the doctors told her that she was in labor. Jennifer had no idea she was pregnant. It turns out she had just misread all of the possible signs. The morning sickness, she thought that was just the flu. The missing of periods. She thought she was just getting her normal irregular periods. She thought the 20 pound weight gain was just her body changing and that the heartburn was just her stomach ulcer playing up again. Jennifer also had a tilted uterus, meaning she couldn't feel the baby really kicking, just a dull pain instead. The full story is quite incredible if you guys are interested to hear more. Next up at number seven now, we have the longest labor. Couldn't leave this off the list, could we? The woman who holds this record is Joanna from Poland, but it's not something you'd wish upon any Anyone. Joanna was carrying triplets. Now, tragically, five months into her pregnancy, one of the fetuses was born prematurely and died. She then started to go into labor before she was ready, and in an effort to delay it, the doctors told her to lie down with her legs in the air. They hoped that the gravity would prevent any more premature births. She stayed like that for 75 days, the longest labor ever recorded. Thankfully, the story did have a happy ending. Joanna gave birth to the twins, all thanks to this crazy technique. Coming at number six now, we have the leap babies. Some people are born on leap days. You might know someone who was. They technically only have a real birthday every four years. It's quite rare, but one couple from Utah might say otherwise. David and Louise are a couple who currently hold the record for having three of their children born on consecutive leap days. Their first three children were all born on February 29th, four years apart from each other. The chances of this happening are about one in a billion. When all of their birthdays only come around once every four years though, I bet it's one hell of a party. Next up at number five now, we have the driving test. For many people, the day of their driving test is a huge deal, usually the most important day of that month. Well, that wasn't necessarily true for Emily French. She was a 20-year-old from Scotland who woke up at 4 a.m. on the day of her driving test to discover that her waters had broke. Her due date was still a month away. Despite everyone telling her otherwise, she decided to hold out for the test, which was at 8.40 a.m. She took the 45-minute test, passed it, and then drove herself to the hospital to give birth. Emily later said that being in labor actually helped kill her pre-test nerves. At number four now, we have Born in the Clouds. This is the story of Ada Alamilo, a Filipina woman who, in 2011, gave birth on a flight from the Philippines to San Francisco, her first time traveling to the US. She was 35 weeks pregnant when she boarded the flight. After a few hours, she went into labor. Luckily, three nurses were on board the plane and helped deliver the baby. Paramedics were waiting for her at the airport too. The baby was healthy, and I'm sure it will one day 
grow up with quite the story. Where were you born? Oh, in that hospital down the road. Yeah, you? Oh, I was born about 39,000 feet above the Pacific Ocean. Cool. Next up at the number three spot now, we have the marathon. For many people who aren't trained athletes, a marathon is a huge physical accomplishment. Well, one woman who wasn't intimidated by this was Amber Miller, who ran the Chicago Marathon when she was 39 weeks pregnant. For those of you that don't know, she's done. You know, that baby is ready to pop out for sure. She ran the first half of the marathon and then she started getting contractions. Time for the hospital, right? Nope. It took her six and a half hours, but she was determined to finish. Amber and her husband then got a bite to eat and headed over to the hospital where she gave birth to a healthy girl. Coming in at number two now, we have work birth. For many women, the ideal place to give birth is in a hospital. Well, Emily Jacobs seemed to have that absolutely sorted when her waters broke in the delivery room at the University of Iowa's hospital. The only thing was, Emily is a doctor. Her waters broke while she was delivering another woman's baby. At first, she didn't even notice, but then, well, I I guess she did. She later said in an interview, it's funny how fast you go from being a doctor to a patient and you're freaking out. I also wonder if that other woman was freaking out too. And finally, at number one now, we have Kendall Stewardson. In 2012, this woman from Iowa gave birth to a 13 pound, 13 ounce baby, just a single ounce short of 14 pounds. Only one in a thousand babies are bigger than 11 pounds at birth. She chose to give birth naturally too. No C-section and no pain medication, absolutely nothing. Thing. Medical professionals on hand were worried before the birth, but quite impressed afterwards. Her husband said she's kind of a hero, and I'd have to agree. All right, guys, usually at the end of a video, I ask for your opinion on the topic that we discussed, but you know, this one was about birth, so it's hard to have a controversial opinion about birth. Birth just kind of, you know, happens, and that's about it. Overpopulation. Talk about that if you guys want. Thanks for watching, everyone. My name is Danny Burke, and I will see you all in the next video. <laughs>